G'day folks, uh, we're going to make some sausages today. Uh, i got my resident expert in with me, because uh, allegedly he knows what he's doing. So, first thing I've done, um, I think it's important, um, the mincer head's been in the freezer for an hour or two. Uh, and that uh, helps with keeping all the mince cold. So in goes the mincer head, and we're set to go. Um, the little zero pack TC8 mincer and uh, while I'm prattling on ends doing the cutting and uh, apparently what we have here um, is a blend of um, wild pork courtesy of Ian allegedly and uh, a bit of venison that got chucked in because um, we didn't know what else to do with it so uh, as soon as he finishes mucking around there chopping it up we're gonna fire it through Right, we're set to go. Venison, wild pork, and a bit of fat chucked in. Let's see where we go. And uh, now we're set to mix it. So um, I'm using a, um, a pre-made or a ready-made mix. This one's a, a South African recipe. Um, actually really meant for, what do they call them? Boar Wars, the big long sausages. Uh, but we're going to use it in our sausages. And we're also going to bung a bit of garlic in too. Because um, we like it. So I've got about... Uh, 250 grams of this stuff, traditional Boar Wars uh, mix, bung it on, and uh, well the garlic, that's going to be a bit of a guess, so I you don't need all that, don't know, he reckons we don't need all that, I do tend to agree, That'll be enough. I'm thinking about that, <laughs> oh God. when in doubt, add a little bit more, nothing wrong with garlic, Keeps the vampires away. So now we've got a mix up. Lovely. It's like a kid in Play Doh. Beautiful. So once we've uh, mixed this, we do bung it through the mincer again just to get a finer grind and a proper mix. So all this has to happen quite quickly um, because one of the secrets to um, getting a good job here. Is cold mince or cold meat. Jesus, this one of those things you just don't feel like stopping doing. It feels so good. So, I don't know, I'm gonna have to stop. <laughs> Somebody stop me. <laughs> okay, here we go then. So, uh, we're gonna go through the 8 mil plate twice because. Um, we want a nice coarse sausage. Set to go. Right on. Round two. Bang it in. Yeah, I think that's looking about right. Bet that's coming through a little finer than the first time round. So if you come in here a little bit closer, you can probably see the difference in the grind. That's the first one through, some quite large chunks in there, and here's the second cut, uh, twice through, just twice through the same th uh, plate, 8 mil plate. Uh, my plan is that will make a nice coarse, um, coarse grind sausage, which um, I think is what we're after. Okay folks, so we've, um, we've got the mince um, or meat all ready to make the sausages. Uh, that was done in case I didn't mention it earlier in the little um, the Harker TC8, so that's just the um, the baby of the um, the range. But as you can see, fires through that nearly six kilos of meat in a flash. Um, so I'm going to set the sausage stuffer up now. Um, same brand of machine. Those are our um, all stainless um, the vertical um, Harkers. Um, this one's the five liter one. Uh, so um, 
I'm going to um, get this thing out of the way, put this thing in place, so we'll get back to you in a flash. Okay, so to load this thing up, out it comes. So the, the first load goes squarely into the bottom, um, try and get rid of some air bubbles. In they go. So we've, uh, just to make things difficult, we've gone slightly over the five kilo mark. So there we go, and in, back into the machine. Like so. So uh, this machine's actually got, um, it's got two speeds on the handle. Fast down just to get it into position. Then uh, there's a little uh, wizard on the side here I attach this to. You can't see it from that side, but that's now our slow forward and reverse. So what we're going to do now is get the skins on the tube. So skins have been soaked. Uh, there's about 10 metres of the stuff here, so that's way more than what we need. Um, these have been soaking since about 9 o'clock this morning. Um, these are hog skins, so I think they were the 34, 36 size or something like that. Which is good for a um, nice chunky sausage. Right, a bit of water on the tube. I don't know if I mentioned it, this is a 20mm tube we're using. It's a good all round size for most sausages. And over the tube, nothing to it really. Just try and keep it uh, roughly centred as we go. Uh, the good thing about the hog casings versus the uh, the lamb casings, they're a lot tougher. While well, you weren't watching, I've now got um, a fair um, old uh, chunk of that um, casing on the, um, the stuffing tube. What we're going to do is we bring the mix out to a point there it is there, where we can just see it, because we don't want air bubbles in the casing. And we bring the casing over the front, and, uh, and tie a knot in it. There we go. And uh, it's better to slightly overfill than underfill. When you're new to this, take it easy, like this. You want to try and avoid air bubbles if you can. Um, if you do get air bubbles in it, you can um, get stuck in with a sharp object later and just, uh, just prick them out. I think as a rough rule of thumb with this sort of size tube and casing, you can count on about, uh, well, I don't know, 10 sausages to the kilo. That's it. Right, we're there. So what I do now, I've got a bit of skin left over, so uh, we, can, um, we can swipe this off. Tie off our sausage. Right, summary of a couple of quick tips um, that I've um, kind of covered on the way through, but um, we'll do them as a, as a summary now. Your mince or your meat needs to be cold prior to mincing. The colder the better, even uh, um, chill off the, the mince ahead. Um, grind of the, um, the meat or the sausage, that's an experiment. We've just done um, twice through an 8 mil plate and, um, and we've got quite a chunky grind. Uh, my faithful assistant can take a close up there. You see it is quite chunky. If you want to find a grind, either make a second run through a 5mm plate or use it twice through, through a 6mm. Uh, that's experimenting. Uh, the next thing, um, a little bit of, particularly with the, the newer or the stainless parallel tubes like that, a little bit of olive oil on the outside makes a huge difference. Um, keeps the, um, the skin running off smooth. Always have enough skin soaked for your job because when you're finished, if you've had some left over, it's not wasted. Like I've just said a minute ago, sort it down, put it in the fridge for next time. Right, so I'm just going to clean up a little bit here, and then we're going to actually turn this great big um, sausage thing into many small sausages. Right, so we're going to turn this into sausages now. Um, the length you make them is entirely your choice. But what we do is we just give it a twist, and then the next one we make, well, you can, if you want to be precise, you can do that so you know where you're up to. Um, but the next one we actually twist 
and the reverse to the other one. So one, two, three, one, one, two, three, like that. One, two, three. It gets a bit repetitive, but I think you get the idea. About three twists, each one goes in the opposite direction. So while you're doing this, um, some of what you're doing actually helps actually remove any of those um, those air bubbles that you have because everything sort of tends to tighten up. Feels quite tight. I mean, these um, the good thing about the hog skins is they are very very tough. So um, touch wood, it takes a bit to bust them. There we go again. Uh, what you can do here too, if you want to go the traditional way, you can actually leave a big curly uh, traditional uh, South African, uh, what do they call it, you know, boar, swirst, something like that, long skinny sausage, poke some sticks through it, cook the hole on the barbecue. So, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little video. If you take a look over here, uh, this is the end result. I haven't counted them yet, but there's piles. They look lovely. So that's about it, folks. Um, if you have questions, please ask. Um, if you want to take a look at the machines uh, that we've used today, that Michelle will show you right now. I'm sure they're much nicer than looking at my face. Um, if you want to look at these machines, hop on the Zero Pack website. You'll see them there. If you have questions, please uh, give us a yell. We're a mine of information on this stuff. Uh, so, uh, yeah, all the best. We'll catch you down the track.